Um, now, I'm Janie Falk. I'm the Dean of Engineering at Nanyang Technological University. And I want to welcome you to this workshop on massive open online courseware. We had a dynamic day yesterday, and I'll give you the two-minute overview of that. Now, we had four speakers yesterday, starting off with um, Jeffrey Young from the Chronicle of Higher Education. Interestingly, he, he talked about the four uh, stakeholder groups, each of which have um, dreams and questions. And he identified issues associated for administrators, for faculty, for policy leaders, and for students. And the most interesting thing that he said, no, the most important thing that he said was those of you who read the Chronicle know that there's a subscribers only series of articles and then there's public articles. All of the MOOC articles are on their public webpage. So you can go and read the entire history of everything they've covered without having to be a subscriber or a member. So that's nice, it's all in one, pla one place. Andrew Nigg from Coursera was the first person to mention the economics of courses, of, of um, MOOCs. He said, if you can teach 100,000 students instead of 400, then you've, you've had a big impact. Much more feedback and personalization resulting from an automated system, and that was kind of surprising. He gave example after example of increased intimacy and increased feedback because of the nature of the software that they've developed. His talk was highly technical in that it talked a tremendous amount about the data that they are collecting and how that can be used to enhance the faculty members' practices and the students' experience. So that was a real plus. That was followed by Howard Lurie, who was unable to attend. He's from edX, a nonprofit, and he focused on four issues the platform, the portal, pedagogy, and production. He also talked about the cost. He pointed out that when you take in, I don't know, 25,000 students and then 10,000 of them take the first homework problem and a few, a, a smaller number t take the midterm and 7,000 ultimately get certified. The resources required to do that is the same on his campus as teaching a one course for 150 students. So again, economics were a big part of his point. His talk actually was even more technical. You, sorry, for those of you who are actually interested in working with the MOOCs. And so go back and look at that if you're interested. He, there was less um, overview and feedback alluded to, but more detail, I think. And so that was good. And then the last speaker, interestingly enough, Dan Pianco, he is from Education Ventures, which is a, a company that invests in higher education activities. They are about to invest in a university, a new university, a new engineering school that is focused on the maker movement. In other words, hands-on. Uh, his opening comment was education costs too much. It was really interesting, and both he and Andrew seemed to indicate that there's a massive market that's not being reached. Um, Andrew pointed out that the vast majority of people who take complete courses with Coursera already have bachelor's degrees. And so their newest venture where they're trying to help systems uh, like the system, state systems in the United States reach their less, um, not less wealthy, but less, less resourced students that's maybe a foray into what we might see them march across the world with, increased opportunity. He kept using the example, and so did Daniel, of moving the needle. If you really want to make an impact, then you're not going to make an impact if you provide a resource that the only people who, or the most of the people who use it are people who already have degrees. How do you reach all these people who need access to higher education and don't already have that privilege? So I think that pretty much summarizes what we did Yesterday, I'm sure it's, it's over on the surface. I thought the talks were great. I thought the conversations, the questions were great. And I'm really looking forward to today. We have four speakers today. And as you note, we've changed the schedule a little bit. Um, I think we really need a break after two lectures. So we've added a tea break in. It means that we will have less time for discussion and reflection at the end of the day. 
but now that I see how you all work together and you chat and you, your break in the middle of the day, I think will be really useful. And if we have a more modest summary time at the end of the day, I don't think we've lost very much.